So what we're doing there, as I said, we're just rearranging uh, the pressure formula and solving it for force. That's another way to do this if you wanted. I probably wouldn't do it on this particular example. I just stick with weight because it's simpler, but, but you could do it this way. You just have to watch your units, okay? So what we got here, we would find the average pressure on the tank of the on the floor of the tank okay so that's how we would uh, would do that so what I've got there is I've got 40 feet and then I know I've got 0.433 psi per foot okay so down at the bottom of that tank what I've got is 17.32 PSI. Um, usually it sends it somewhere and it becomes kind of a guessing game where it was sent to. There it is. But of course I can't do anything with it here. And I, I really don't understand this. This is one of those little program glitches. So that says 40 feet times 0.433 PSI per foot is actually 17.32 PSI. So I don't quite know how to handle this, but uh, we'll just grin and bear it, I think. Well, now it's not here anymore. <laughs> uh. All right, so 17.32 PSI is the pressure at the bottom of that 40-foot tank. We'll just stay with that for now. Okay, now we want to find the area at the bottom of the tank. Now, the one thing on this to remember is we've got that diameter in feet, okay? So we've got 17.32 PSI, which is pounds per inch squared is what PSI is. And then what we've got is 30 feet. Now be careful because that's feet. We've got PSI, pounds per square inch. So what, we got 12 inches per foot. So when we multiply that through, we get 360 inches and that's equal to the diameter. So 360 over two is 180 inches and that's the radius. Okay, so we've got a um, 180 inch radius for that tank. I want to be inches so that I match the PSI, the pounds per square inch. So the area of the tank then will be pi times 180 inches squared. So it's going to be an awful lot of square inches. It's 101,788. inches squared, okay? So what you would do next is you would just multiply together. So F equals PA. So the force, which is the weight, you know, whatever you want to call it, is the pressure, which is 17.32 pounds per square inch but then lots and lots of square inches, 101,788 inches squared. So if you multiply that out, you get uh, a lot of uh, pounds. So it's 1,762,961 pounds is what I got. Again, you might round to get a little different um, now. Okay. So this is the other way to do it. And this is... Uh, for this particular situation, this probably isn't the best method, but there's other situations where you do use this method. So we, we probably want to know about this one, okay? And what do we get on for our other answer? I think for the other one that I did, I got a 1,764,318, okay? So what we have there is just some rounding difference depending on what method you use. What's that? 
Yeah, if you're dealing with, you're exactly, if you're dealing with a million seven hundred thousand pounds, uh, whatever, fourteen hundred pounds difference, you know, who cares? You know, it's it's not it's not much. It, yeah, you're not going to design anything any differently for that small of a difference when you're dealing with that big of a load. Okay. All right. So the first method, finding the weight, that works, you know, on problems that deal with weight. The second method actually works uh, more generally. It's kind of the more general method that we use. Okay. So you're okay with that? All right, let's look at that more general method then. Now the thing is to find the total force. So this is page eighty. You got to use the average pressure times the area. Okay. So sometimes in a case like this, if you've got a dam, yeah, you don't really think so, do you? Okay. Um, There it is. Okay. <laughs> so if we have that wall there, you know, a dam is basically a wall that backs up the water. If the wall there is 10 feet high, and then we've got eight feet of water backed up behind it, and 20 feet of uh, length to the dam, what we want to do here is find a couple of things. We want to find the average pressure on the dam. Okay. All right. So the average pressure, there's two ways to look at it. See, the pressure at the top is zero PSI. I mean, there's no pressure on top of the water. And the pressure on the bottom will be based on the eight feet. So if I multiply that out, I'll get the pressure on the bottom. And that is uh, 3.464 PSI. Okay. So you do have to account for the average pressure, not the minimum at the top and not the maximum at the bottom. Now notice what's um, causing this pressure is the water. So I don't really care that the dam is 10 feet high. That's got nothing to do with it. What matters is the eight foot high water surface. The fact that dam is 10 feet high really doesn't affect anything. It's just, uh, what do they call those? Red herrings, I think is the word for that. Okay. It's just the water that causes the pressure. So if you want to find the average pressure here, what you do, you take the pressure at the top plus the maximum pressure at the bottom over 2 and you'll get 1.732 PSI. So that's the average pressure. Now remember what that is, is pounds per inch squared. Okay. So 1.732 pounds per inch squared. Okay, so the thing to do next here is to find out what the area of the dam is. Well, actually, it's the area of the water on the dam, is I guess would be a better way to put that. Okay. And then multiply the average pressure times that area. Okay. So the average pressure is 1.732. And then the uh, area of the dam that's affected, well, what we're going to do with that is we're going to take 8 feet times 12 inches per foot 
Now what I'm doing here, I'm getting everything into uh, inches because I want to um, get the area in inches because I've got a pressure in PSI. So what I got there was 96 inches. All right, and then I've also got the uh, length of the dam is 20 feet. And that'll be times 12 inches in a foot. So that'll be 240 inches. And so then what I'll do to find the area is just take the 96 inches times the 240. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'll, I'll go find it. I'll see if I can find it. There it is. Although it's mixed with something else. The 96 inches comes from 8 feet times 12 inches per foot. And then the um, 240 inches comes from 20 feet times 12 inches per foot. So we'll just multiply that by the pressure and that'll get you the force. So you, first you want to find the area and then once you've got that you multiply that by the pressure and you get the force. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do first is find the area, and that's 96 inches by 240 inches, and that comes out to be uh, 23,040 inches squared, and then to get the force, you take the pressure times the area. So the force is the pressure, which is the average pressure, 1.732 pounds per square inch times the number of square inches, the 23,040. And then you multiply that out and you get 39,905. Thereabouts, and that's pounds is what you get out of that, okay? Because the inches just cancel. So when they build these dams, they put walls on them to anchor them into the side of the river because you can get a lot of force pushing on those things. And I heard of a case once where they wasn't built properly. They didn't get those walls anchored properly and the water just pushed the dam down the river. Really? On the cheap uh, materials? Oh, oh I didn't hear about that. In LA. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did, it, did the wing walls just broke off or yeah, what happened? Yeah, cheap materials just wow, killed okay. by an army. Oh, goodness, I didn't know about that. That's horrible. It was like 1920. Or okay. Yeah. Yeah, I heard about another case too, you know, and so you got to be sure that you're anchoring these dams into the walls of the creek or the river. Okay. All right. So we got, so that's um, what we got here. Okay. Just to start with this force stuff. Um, so, and we got that stuff due Monday, right? Those things we went over. Okay. So you all have a good weekend. Thank you.